Okay. And, thank you. And, and that way, Chris can take over and run the meeting, but now it's recorded and I will submit the video when we're done. Okay. okay. Yeah, Thanks. I think uh, they ask for, they don't want a link to YouTube, um, no. I think is, um, yeah, they want an MP4 file or, you know, something along those lines. So, yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they do. All right. I, I, um, I'll follow the instructions. I'll make sure it gets up. Okay. Awesome. Appreciate that. Um, I will not follow the instructions. Um, well, kind of. So, so when I, I do the video reviews, maybe a little differently. I know some teams come with a big fancy presentation they want to, um, but I, I'm, I'm practical. So I, I love to love to hear about your project and all that kind of stuff. But I also want to make sure that um, we cover the important parts. And and what we want is we want to make sure that you guys can show up and fly a rocket successfully, right? Like that's that's the whole goal. Um, for international teams, there's some additional challenges, right? Um, so we we have to work around those. But but it, in terms of a rocket flying safely, like for me, I I really I worry about the rail buttons and how they're mounted on the rocket, right? Mm -hmm. How they're attached. I I worry about. Are you guys a thirty thousand foot rocket yeah. or a ten thousand? Uh, thirty thousand. 30,000, are you flying a COTS motor or an SRAD motor? A COTS motor. COTS motor, okay. A Cesaroni one. Uh, do what? A Cesaroni, Cesaroni. A Cesaroni one, well, I, okay. So we can maybe cover that a little bit out of out of order then. Do you have confirmation that you're going to get that motor? Like you've paid for it, you've talked to the vendor, they have it. Um, yes. Okay. Because yes, we actually send an email to the vendor. Okay. We are mm, we bought it um from the AMW M Animal Motor Works. Okay. The name, and we have the confirmation. All right, you got confirmation. I I you know there's there's been some challenges with Cesaroni motors. Um, I'm not going to tell you how to run your thing, but like, you know. I think there's a few teams that have quote ordered a motor and they think they have a motor, but like if there's not a photo of the motor in that vendor's hands by now, then I I worry. Um, okay, we don't have a photo, but they said that um they reload uh, is in stock and is set okay. aside for delivery. All to right, you, so Facebook America Cup. Perfect. You'll have to trust them. We'll have to trust them on that, right? But so yeah. there's, there's one. There's one piece, right? There's the logistics. <laughs> So, so we're going a little backwards here. So, okay. So rail buttons, yeah. Rail buttons attached yes. to the rocket are important. Um, okay. So here we have like the reinforcement that we will okay. use. Okay. This is the, the rail button. And then maybe I'm now with his mobile can show you the rail button assembled on the rocket. Awesome. Yes. No, yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Can you see it? Okay. I can see it. No, no, no. Sorry. Okay. okay, so here there's a ray button. And then we are using the reinforcement inside. Yes. Here. Excellent. Okay. So I will say this. Are you gonna glue those in? So that uh, you... yes. Okay. Yes, with um, epoxy. With epoxy. All right. The nut may come off, um, especially if it's a lock nut. Um, and are you using? So this is a really weird question, but are you using Cots uh, rail buttons? Did you purchase those rail buttons from somewhere? No, we okay. machined them. Yeah, we have it's lots of problems have... with people okay. custom making rail buttons and them not working. Okay, in the moment, they're five but... bucks. <laughs> they're five dollars. Yes, we, we have used them in our own lunch pad and they work really well. And we think it's so similar. Okay. That similar. The one, that the Ezra one. All but right. we are worried and for that reason we send you um like the dimensions of our rail button. So again, they're I'm not the final say, right? There's going to be a physical safety review when you get to the event. And okay. 
Um, so, so hold your rail button up again and let me, let me illustrate one thing to you. So turn it sideways so we can see the cross section of it. The head of your bolt sticks out a lot. So normally the way the, normally the way the rail buttons are made, they're made with, with a tapered nut that's, and then the, the rail button itself has a chamfer cut into it so that the metal part of the, the screw is flush. Okay. Okay. okay, do you recommend us any in particular? You said that there's Scotch uh, rail buttons. Yes, any, any of the vendors that are going to be there on site will have rail buttons for so you. So we right? can buy it there. Yeah, well, make sure you. You, you can to buy the two from me. I'll bring them for you. Ah, okay. Okay, Brett. That's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you very yes. much. But I, I, I have some 15 15 buttons. Yeah, from uh, fruity <laughs> shoots that I use all the time. I don't know if Chris <laughs> would feel comfortable with those, but it's fun. Look, so so the challenge that we have, the only reason we're making a big deal out of this is we, we rail buttons is a silly problem to have for as much as they don't cost, right? They're they're like five bucks or something for two of them, typically May, maybe ten. You know, last of the big spenders here. Um, but but what I'm then worried about is making sure that your design, your retention design, you can take your bolt out and switch the rail buttons and put them in without having to go through a lot of trouble. So the way okay, that your yes. metal thing, I love the metal reinforcement, that's fantastic, but yes. then you've got that nut behind it. And if you unscrew that, number one, you may have to hold the nut so that you can unscrew it. And then number two, the nut could fall off and then you're gonna have trouble getting. So I just, those are the things I'm kind of concerned for on your behalf. Okay. okay. Okay, I we don't have want you to have those case. problems. Yes. Okay. We will use epoxy to fix everything. Um, yes. Yeah. So I'm just trying to help you avoid, you yes. know, extra stress. We use you don't need uh, self-locking um, nuts. Yes. Yeah. To avoid. Um, it just it makes it difficult to change it out, right? Yes. So I'm, okay. I'm just yes. observing that. I'm not we telling you you have to change it. We should expect to change it during the competition, the the real button. Well, if you if if uh, Brett is going to bring you some, then you're going to have to switch them, right? Okay. Yes. Could you okay. wait to mount them until you get them from me yes. and then epoxy them in? Is it accessible or um, is it not yes. possible? Yes. Yes. It's so. Um, I don't know. It's so accessible because our design is like modular. So it's easy to, one is here and then the other one. I don't It's a tube and a tube. Is, is that, yeah. that motor mount tube, the inner tube is, does it come out? Yes. Okay. Then, then yes, it's very accessible. Okay. Yes, right. it, less... yes, is, is everything removable easily? All right. I'm less worried. Yes. Just to avoid having problems. It takes like okay. 10 minutes to fix. Yeah, all, all right. right. Okay, so I, again, I'm going to, uh, Alba, I'm going to bring you screws, nuts, and rail buttons that all okay. work together. I okay, recommend perfect. that you not assemble anything and then I give them to you and you guys consider using the screws that I have because they match the chamfer. Yeah, in the uh, top of the rail button. And okay. They're very strong. And I I, I, um, I have no doubt that these will work well for you, but please wait if you can to do any gluing until you have everything from me. Okay, perfect. Yeah. All right. So so yes, rail buttons is a big thing. I like I said, I love the reinforcement. That's fantastic. Um, you know, it's through the wall as as prescribed, perfect. But we have people try to machine them and then they don't fit. You know, there's a metric to standard conversion and, the, you know, the rail that you have that it worked on isn't the rail that you're flying. I, anyway, it's it's a thing. So so this okay. is why I've spent 10 minutes on on rail buttons. Um, yes, yes, they are so important. Yes, they're important. They need to keep yes. the rocket on the pad and point it up during launch, right? Okay. Yes. So the next thing that I'm going to ask you about is your thrust to weight ratio. What is your thrust to weight ratio? You know? It's I think it's 19. Yes, let me 19? just 
Yes, be, because we have um seven kilonewtons of maximum thrust. So he's nineteen. Nineteen to one. Okay, that's a good that's a good thrust to weight ratio to fly in the wind. Outstanding. Um I was looking at your rail button distance between yes, bottom and the top. I have in millimeters, but millimeters. So is it it looks like at least a meter between them. Yes. There's I'm with a lot. Yes. If so not, here we, we don't need I don't need the exact measurement, but what I do want you Yes, I have a metro like Abby. Uh, uh, no, it's just total model, eh? One second. That I have a photo here. Mm. So Alba, I'm not I'm not necessarily asking yeah. you to tell me exactly yeah. the distance. Okay, more than a meter. A yeah, meter more than a meter. Okay. Than, uh, but but here's the important part to understand about that, right? So mm -hmm. How many rail buttons does it take to make sure that the rocket is stable on the rail? We are using two. You're using two. That's the minimum, right? So yes. when the first rail button leaves the rail, the rail buttons are no longer helping keep the rocket stable, correct? Yes. Okay. The distance between the rail buttons is important because why? How long is the rail? Um, the, the total rail minus this distance. Hey, okay, see, he's got it figured out, right? So mm -hmm. the, the you lose stability, your effective length of your rail is important. Okay, now you have a very high thrust to weight ratio rocket motor, and um, I'm pretty sure that the launch rail departure speed will be sufficient. So, uh, but yeah. but it is something that you should be aware of and and consider. Mm -hmm. No, but we'll yeah. Okay. okay, we are taking notes about all your comments. Okay, so so it, it's probably not an issue, but again, it's just a consideration that you should be aware of, um, especially if you have to change a motor, right? If for whatever reason you have to pick a different motor or something like that, right? Okay, um, let's move over to... So we got to keep the rocket on the, on the launch rail and we got to keep the pointy end up at least for it to get off the rail. We need it to be stable when it leaves the rail. Um, then, then we need to worry about, especially with supersonic rockets and how fast does your rocket go? What's max Q? What's your speed? Um, is mag 1.7, I think. 1.7, that's a pretty, pretty significant rocket. So no, next we need to worry about things like keeping the fins attached and making sure that couplers don't fold, let the rocket fold in half, right? Yes. So let's look at fins. Okay, fins. Um, We can show you the assembly now and we can show you a photo because okay. now is everything assembled on the rocket. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, so you had some pretty good pictures. Is your, you had the, the boat tail, the tail cone on it. Yes. Are they have... metal? What what are the fins made of? Yes, metal, metal. aluminum. Oh, okay. Aluminum. 60, 60, no, 70, All right. Have you done a fin flutter analysis, I presume? Yes. Yeah. I now can tell you more about it. Yeah. We use the the NASA equation of nice. and and we had like a uh, factor of safety of 1.7. Okay. The minimum factor of safety was that one. Yeah. So, uh, okay. All right. If you, you've done, so those are questions that the, the final reviewer people are going to ask you and you need to be prepared. Um, I do, I do want to see how the fins are attached inside. Yes. Um, if you prefer, I can show you a picture that we sure. have. Uh, whichever, can... whichever is easy for you. Yes, it's easier to see everything. Just um, let's see how I can share the screen. Share screen. Understand? Oh, where's the green one? Vale, bueno, ni nada Okay, can you see my? I can see that. Okay. All right. Right. Okay. So yeah. this is basically how yeah. is it that it has two brackets made of aluminum too. 
So the fins are attached by two points here and, and here, and yeah. then here and here. And they are. Is there well, a slot? They they fit down into a slot? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I All right. Can, I'm okay I with can, that. Okay. So this is the, the system that we are using. That's and then everything that... is um assembled what? in the rocket. Yes. That's a four fin assembly there. It looked like your your fins were three fins on your rocket. No, we no, have four. four. Oh, okay. <laughs> we can show Maybe you four again. Four no, no, no. That's okay. I, I'll believe you. I just <laughs> I, I thought I saw three, but I, I'm I'm in, in incorrect. Okay. Um, uh, Alba, I have a question for you and your yes. team. Did you end up applying epoxy fillets to the fins? We will do it um, at the spaceport because yeah. we will ship the rocket without the fins attached to avoid any damage. So, Chris, I had strongly encouraged the team to add an additional safety margin um, and increase rigidity a bit by adding an epoxy fillet once they do a final assembly. So I got you. Yep. Just, just FYI. Okay. And and then, so as long as that epoxy fillet is applied before you do your safety review, then they won't have as many questions. So okay. outstanding. Outstanding. I, I, I am very okay with with what this looks like okay so, so i stopped sharing you got screen. your fin flutter you got the fins attached fairly well you're going to reinforce the fin attachment once you get to the site um i don't have any problems with with any of those things show me your couplers the okay and, and specify couplers that are something that are bolted together and don't the non-separation joints versus separation yes. joints Yes, uh, one second that we will um, collect all of them because we are using like a modular design. So we have like little pieces and tubes. So for example, this is one, I get this all the, all the, all, no? Yes. This one, okay. yes, that is the, um, the one that is above in the recovery. Yep. And then here we have the other one. Okay. okay. So here's what I can tell you by looking at those. All right. And and you need to go look at the detail because they do allow bolted things like you've got. There's there's certainly that is allowed. And and they do allow the coupler length to be a little shorter for bolted versus separation joints. But yours are awful short. And I'm not sure mm -hmm. that that's going to pass the final safety review. Okay. Um, there's... Okay. We, we have conduct, um, we have done some simulations um, to make sure that they will stand the loads. Yeah. Stand the loads and the rocket will not bend. Or... Okay. Yeah. You, you've and... done flex, the flexual, the flexual loads or whatever. Yeah. Because the the problem of shorter uh, couplers are the bending with with the fuselage, that uh, our fuselage is is made of um, carbon fiber with two point four millimeters, and doing finite elements method um, analysis, we have like a factor of safety of ten in bending. So okay, so did and you? Was... Sorry, sorry. Continue. So hold hold up the coupler and let me show you where I'm concerned and and. So the 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 amount of carbon fiber between the the edge of the tube and the bolt that's where it's going to break. Okay, so you mean this distance, yeah. like this distance. Okay, we um, used this design in another uh, supersonic rocket that we okay. launched two years ago, and everything went. Good and we didn't have any problems with the voltage unions and with this distance. I How understand. Much wind, the point. How much wind did you fly that in? Um, what was the wind speed? I think it was like eight meters, seven, yes. seven or eight meters second uh, at ground ground speed. Okay, seven or eight meters. That's pretty. That's a decent wind. Um, 
Okay, but just know that those <clears throat> those are going to be questions by I would as short as those are, I would highly recommend that you take photos and send some information to Ken Overton, the RSO. He's the he's the the range safety officer for the entire event. Can you repeat um, his name, please? Ken Overton. Ken Overton. Ken Overton. Ken Overton. Ken Overton. Ken Overton. Okay. Okay. So he will have the final say in whether that rocket can fly as designed and built. Okay. And so I'm not here to tell you necessarily yes or no. I'm here to look at things and go, that's going to raise a lot of questions as short as those are. Okay. Other people that are doing bolted sections like you, they're their aluminum section is three times the length of what three you have times. three yeah mm -hmm. they've got you know like For the... four or five centimeters on each side okay. of that coupler and then they can move the bolts up a lot mm -hmm. further right to bolt mm -hmm. higher up and further away from the edge or the end of the tube and then and then you've got that cross section that that helps with your flexual right yes yeah. Yeah, okay. so we also have like uh, this part. Yeah, but yes. The, the, yes, but <laughs> but the problem is the Yes, but I imagine that. Yeah. This so anyway, so I'm not telling you you have to change it. I'm I'm just yes, telling yes, you the, 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 that as short as those are, that is going to raise a lot of questions and concerns. And and the time mm -hmm. to find that out is not the day before you want to launch the rocket because you can't make another one, right? And yes. so follow up with Ken Overton, show him pictures, Send okay. him the design. Send him your analysis, your your anal your stress analysis, and all those. And if he says okay, again, the safety review people are going to question it when you get there, but you're going to have documentation um, from them. Okay. Okay. Thanks. And and Brett has provided. Yes, yeah, everything. <laughs> Thank right. you, Brett. So yes, so so look again. I, I know that in, in wind, you know, the, the rocket's going really fast and it starts to do things like this where it gets tipped, you know, with weather cocking and, and that type of thing. And there are some very interesting stresses that get put on rockets that far exceed what people think are, is going to happen to that rocket. So, so Alba, okay. I have a question for you and your team. Yes. <laughs> it's, just, <laughs> it's, it's a crazy idea. Um, could you hold your bulkhead up again? One of one of them, sorry, yes. so we can look at it just for a second. Just pick one. Okay, so let's say that Ken Overton says no, you can't fly. Could you make um, an aluminum machined insert? I'm going to say it's uh, five centimeters, six, eight centimeters uh, tall. Yeah. That that slides down and it has a flange and then you screw it into the hole into the bulkhead here and then and mount the rocket um uh, um uh, have the screws for the rocket above it yes we could do it so if it was me that's what i would do okay okay thank you for thank the you. advice so, so that, that's just my personal advice um okay. in parallel you can talk to ken but um the 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 risk you have is you've worked really hard and you're going to spend a lot of money you're going to end up out there and if somebody decides on a whim that this doesn't pass you're dead so if it was me if i could do that i would do it now and uh be done with it but you know chris is in the end you know your safety reviewer not me okay yeah, and, and like like I said, I'm I'm here to kind of help make sure that you're going to be successful, and I'm going to help you get the things you need, you know, to get answers before the day of. Right, that's that's my main goal is make sure that you give you the best possible chance, successful all the way around. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's talk about um, how many bulkheads is just the one bulkhead. Um. Yes. No. See. You have just does the nose cone separate? It's a tie. It's a um. 
Uh, um, can you repeat the question, please? Because we didn't understand the, the part that you are asking. Us. I'm, I'm asking the separation. Okay. Joint. Where does the parachute come out? Uh, why, don't you, why don't you guys show him your rocket starting at the top? And yeah. show them all the joints, just we so he can understand it how it works. Assembled, but, okay, and the chakemas doors? Yeah, okay. it's actually better that it's not assembled. So show me nose cone and then show me yes. where it separates. He's not in the nose cone. Okay. Okay, so our rocket is, this is where all the payload go. Because this is fiberglass and fiberglass, I would want it for mm -hmm. transparency. Then it comes the recovery module that is here. And then you have this over here. And the separation is here. We have um, four sharpies, and they break using the raptors. And here we have the other. Then we have the avionics that are there, the avionics bay. Okay. Okay. That has here a service panel to quickly change the, the battery. And then we have the motor module. Okay. Can I can I see that part that has the the service entries yes this part yeah okay. i want to see close up there we go closer can you see um yeah, okay that those is there any other reinforcement you've got those those little yes we have these uh, metal pieces as the reinforcement, not the structure. Because that, that looks like weak. another potentially weak joint. A what? It's a weak joint. Huh. So sh okay. should we increase the thickness? Yeah. There's going to be more questions about that, too. Okay. Yeah, so th those like right, like in a dynamic flight, are those going to bend? Okay. Okay, and then we have like the the fuselage here that yes. has to go with the structure. Okay. 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 Here we have one piece, and this goes here. Are those I mean, very nice design? That I. I'm sorry, what, Brett? I, I was just wondering whether the covers provide any structural reinforcement or are those just covers? No, they they provide reinforcement since they are made of the same glass fiber as as the, the avionics model. So, yes, so they, if we, yeah. we took a, a tube and we cut it into pieces. Yeah. The, the They'll provide some reinforcement, yeah. But but, okay. but the the distance between the screw hole and the edge is is quite small, so you you end up with the same basic the same challenge. Here. Yep. Well, yep. and also then where is that in relation to the rocket? Is that up near the nose cone or is that in the middle? In the middle. Uh, no. In the middle. Mm. Um. Yeah. In the middle. Yeah, in the, the middle. middle. Okay. So it's going to take a lot more of the stress. Sí, pero yeah. Yeah. Okay. Have, have you flown this rocket at all? That like this exact rocket? No, no. we have flown. I mean, you can show. We have flown this one. Okay. Which has like the same design philosophy, but we okay. change things like the thin attachment and all of this. And this rocket reached um seven point eight kilometers. Okay. And we used a similar uh, motor, a Cesaroni O3400. Okay. All right. Well, so you have at least some evidence, like like you've got your engineering failure stuff that you can, you know, show margins of safety. 
You've got a rocket of a similar design that has flown. So you've got some evidence there. Um, but these these are the type of questions that you need to be prepared to answer with the, the on-site safety people. And again, please go look at the DTAG because that the rules, we had a lot of people making those short machined aluminum things over the past few years that I've been participating in the event. And there's been a lot of concern with those being, and we've seen rockets not survive with those short couplers, right? Okay. And so I think this year, I think the rules were changed and they got a lot more specific about how we long. We didn't see anything about this part and we revised all the detail and take like okay. requirements. And I don't remember to you see You don't remember any, seeing any of that? All right. I will revise it, uh, revise it again. I could be, I could be mistaken. Mm -hmm. Um, no, 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 don't worry. And um, maybe is us that we didn't okay. read everything well. Do you remember to see requirements specific for that part? But which part? Uh, para el service panel and the uh, aluminum. Ah, con la grulla viendo se. No, yeah. I don't think so. So maybe increasing the. Um, ¿Cómo es de euros? The, the width. thickness. Yeah, yeah the thickness, thickness of the. <laughs> Sorry, the thickness of the of that pieces, yeah, would be okay. Possibly yes. Or, okay. Or and if we change it to instead of it... instead of a, a plate, if we use a rectangular cross section, mm -hmm. that will be even better, right? Yes. Okay. And do you recommend any specific uh, width? I'm not recommending any. Like I'm not telling you how to design your rocket. Even it's an engineering maybe, competition. Yeah. But I am telling you, I I find points of concern that that others are going to ask you about, and you're going to need good answers for, or you're going to need to maybe re like, um, your your engineer next to you there. Maybe we need to change it to a slightly larger piece, right? Like those are for you guys to decide. Okay. All right, um, so I've seen that now. The separate, I can tell you for sure up at the top where you have the separation using the nylon bolts, The I think the minimum is one caliber for any separation joint, right? So the, the length of the coupler that goes into the part that's going to come off in order to allow the parachutes to come out need, so if you've got, a 150 millimeter diameter rocket tube, then you have to have 150 millimeters of coupler to that's slide cool apart. Okay, that's one caliber. So this coupler doesn't. Sorry, like we have. So the this coupler is not okay. We need to make Correct. it longer. Yes, it, it'll have to be longer if it's the separation point. Okay. Minimum uh, a caliber. Minimum of one caliber, right? So I don't what is the diameter of your rocket? Uh, six inch, six one eight. Six inch. Okay, he's got in inches. Um so you need six inches of coupler. Okay. My, okay. right, so rough, I think six inches is roughly 150, 150. It's not minimum. a problem with the separation, but because maybe it gets like um, stuck, stuck, stuck yeah. when coming off, if it's too long. Well, it, we use black powder over here. And so we usually don't have any trouble with things sliding off. Um, you have dissimilar materials, which is a different engineering challenge. A lot of times when we are separating rockets, a lot of the stuff I fly, we have similar materials. So I have a fiberglass coupler with a fiberglass tube or a carbon fiber coupler and a carbon fiber, right? So their expansion uh, coefficients are the same with given a amount of heat, right? When you have dissimilar materials, then you do have challenges with them. Potentially, you have challenges with them coming apart or being kind of loops right um because you've you've accounted for that so um, okay but, and um if we use like uh we extend this part we can have the um, the voltage union here or you you can still yes you can use your shear pins in that location but they're just going to want that overlap to be one caliber okay 
Okay. So here, like an extension yes. here. Yes. Okay. Especially at the separation joint, please. And I'm I'm pretty certain that is in the D tag. Yes. Yes. Okay. But we thought it was um, only when you do the separation um using tolerances and not the share pins. Uh no. No, so it, for it, this reason we make it like more I got you. I got you. No, it, you you can opt to use shear pins or not. That is completely up to you and your design and, and testing. But the the rule remains it must be one caliber for separation joint, at a minimum of one caliber. So mm -hmm. okay. Okay. We'll change that. All right. Um the electronics that you are flying for yeah. is it are they COTS electronics, the like SRAD yeah. electronics? We use uh one control yeah. electronics. Oh, okay. yeah, sorry. <laughs> we have everything here. We use one coach electronics and then I know uh our SRAT electronics. Okay. Have both of them. So you got SRAD like like one electronic COTS. What is the electronics, the COTS one? The COTS one is a uh, missile works RR C3. Okay. Have you ever flown an R that? Yeah, we've flown in three times okay. a month ago, something like. This. All right, and have you flown your SRAD le electronics? No, in theory, Brett is going to fly them. I think in June. In eight. June. Eight. Okay, perfect. So I promised to get them a flight to about thirteen thousand <laughs> feet, about Mach one one. Okay. Uh, and if it works, then they're probably okay. And if it doesn't, they're going to have to swap their altimeter. <laughs> All right, perfect. See, you, you know, you've uh, you've got another. I, I'm I'm a flyer of record for a couple of teams, and um, it's good to see that there are other grumpy flyer of records. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually happy about it. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. So although, I, I too. Al although it's pretty big, so they, <laughs> they, they they forced me to to fly a bigger <laughs> rocket than I had originally planned. Sorry right? for that. I got you. <laughs> All right. So I, I just worry about people trying to fly electronics for the first time and they've never flown it and no experience with that particular platform or, you know, whatever. So uh, sounds like you got some experience with that particular electronics and, and you have flown other rockets with those electronics. You know how they behave, you know how to configure them. Yes. 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 Okay. Are you flying only the CO2 ejection or are you using black powder as a backup no we are using the the raptor system okay and we and have you... a backup that one is connected to the cod's electronics and the other into the rats electronics i got you and you've flown those raptors before and you have yes with okay. the rocket that we show you before yep. and we used less charge than the one that we are using now I got you. So again, it's it's just a you're familiar with it. You know it works. You, yep. Okay. Good. Have you done a ground test with this? Yes. Rocket? We have a video to show you. Perfect. And we used um thirty five grams, but um oh sorry, no, but dot. Don't worry. Um, and in a Spaceport America Cup, we will use forty five. You'll use forty five. Yeah. We, 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 we use, use 35. We 35, but we will use 45. Yes. Okay. So you're going to so have a we larger... tested we tested uh, one with two 35 gram of CO2 canisters. Um, the rocket was all assembled and we simulated all the real masses because here you can see that we don't have the fins to, yeah. to not damage them. And the outcome was successful separation, and this was the the separation length that we have with both two. Okay. And here you can see, for example, the the oh, the cut pin. pin, yeah, I like it. <laughs> and then we have here the video. Maybe I can like, yes. You can just play it right there, I think. Yes, but I want it bigger. And maybe we can. That's full it. screen. On the lower right. Yes. Okay. It comes apart. I'm I'm satisfied with that. Okay. That's... And then wait, sorry. 
it's it's just really important with a big rocket that so so we kept it on the rail we kept it together when it went up right and we aren't spacex so anything we're putting up is going to come back down um and and i really worry about making sure that when it gets to apogee that we we i call it render it aerodynamically unviable meaning if if all else fails after that first apogee charge at least the rocket doesn't come down at near the speed of sound ballistic right because it's really hard for humans to see a ballistic rocket and move out of the way it's a lot easier for a human to see even if it's only a drogue or even if the nose cone is just separated and it's flopping in the air it's a lot easier to see that and gives humans at least a little bit of an opportunity to get out of the way right and and so from a safety perspective, that's why that's really important to make sure that that yes. event happens. Okay. For us, it's an important point also, because we understand that with a thirty thousand feet rocket is another thing. It's not yes. a ten thousand. Yes. So we are working really hard in in that part, and then we we did another um, rocket separation test. This time only using one. Okay. Um, canister. And, and everything was the same, and this was the separation. It was less. Yes. But in theory, in the real flight, we will use both because both electronics uh, will send uh, the signal okay. and will activate the disruptor ah, system. I got you. Yeah, yeah. But we okay. wanted to be sure that okay. with one, we are also safe. Okay. Okay, because, no. again, this is an important point for, for us also. Yes. All right. So then you're using some sort of shoot release or something like that to to deploy the main parachute. Yes, we are using the yes the macro paracord line cutter. I'm sorry, in here. The macro paracord line cutter. Okay. From Tinder Rock. Yeah. Yes, we we have some here. Brett, isn't there one of them that, like like Tinder Descender? Well, there's one of them. I think they they prohibit. Yes, we had a gender descender, but then we decided to change it okay. to this one because we think that this one is allowed. Oh, can you here? Um, you can you can close your video. Let me let me see what you got. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, sorry. No worries. <laughs> yes, All here right. we have the the macro. Wait, everything. Ah, uh, okay, the, gotcha. Okay. All right. I'll buy. I'll buy yes. two. Take one of the cutters out. Yes. And just yes. hold that up so Chris can see it. Brett suggested to use this one because they allowed um um like um redundancy, mechanical redundancy also. Uh -huh. Because with the tender descender, we all, we only had like the electronic uh, redundancy. Yes. But here we will have uh two and then gotcha. yes. Okay. So, so Chris, what they're doing is they're, um, there's paracord that goes through these two, and it holds the main in a bag down against that AVA plate. Yes. And either one, when it cuts, will release the of paracord, and the bag gets pulled out by the door. Yep. So it's dramatically more reliable than a Tinder descender. Yes. I'll, outstanding. I am I am good with that. Um, okay. And then we are using the pretty shoot uh, deployment bag. Okay. Okay. Have you used that before? No. Uh -huh. It's our first time, but Brett is so experimented using this recovery system. So we are All right. ready. <laughs> so so, has so I, I promised to help them hold this reliably in okay. this bag so there's there's one test that you can do repeatedly that doesn't cost you anything but time right <laughs> when you pack your parachutes up we call it the walk test do you know what the walk test is yeah to run with the parachute until it not, opens. not run with the parachute you put you put everything in the rocket as if it were ready to fly you have one person hold the fin can and you have another person pull on the nose cone and just walk. Okay. Okay. And then instead of firing the thing to cut it, you just loop your paracord through, but you don't tie it together. And then you pull 
right? So you can pull it out, you can kind of see where the drogue is, and then you can keep walking and make sure that the whole thing unfolds like it's supposed to, okay? Okay, we will and do that, it. Do it repeatedly, because that will be how you practice folding and getting your parachute, and it'll, you will then be very comfortable with making sure that the way you're doing it allows it to come out of the bag very cleanly and easily. And you can tell if you're pulling on it hard and it's not coming out, you, you might want to make a change. Okay. Can I see the rest of the harness? Like the, the actual, yeah. yeah. So here we have the, the droge chute that okay. is a two feet um, droge parachute, an elliptical one, I think. Uh -huh. yeah. From Pretty Chutes again, it was a recommendation from Brett also. All right. So and you then, said you, you guys are going to fly this whole rocket. Your intention is June 8th. Is that what you told me? You no, this, this rocket, no. Uh, Brett okay. is uh, flying electronics. only the electronics uh, using they, one of his rockets. They sent me a duplicate of their avionics, okay. and I'm going to put it in an airframe that I have already. I got you. Um, they won't be in the United States yet. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. But and so it's, you guys, uh, it's the same hardware version, same firmware version. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So you guys aren't going to actually be able to fly the whole rocket until the space. No. Goes. Okay. No, because here in Spain it's so difficult to find a, a place. Um, the the other rocket that we show you, we had to go to a spaceport here in in Spain and pay a lot of money to uh, to learn from them. It was okay. like. A lot. I got you. It was more expensive paying the, the site than the rocket. Wow. <laughs> so we don't have any places here. That's a bummer. Yes. Okay. And so you then... have the main parachute. So so then you're not going to have actual speeds. You're going to just have theoretical, right? Your calculated yes. descent speeds, right? Yeah. Yes. And okay. here, well, we have the, the main parachute, which is a seven feet uh, seven feet iris elliptical parachute from Pretty Church, which is more compact. And we decided this one because it's, it's, it's compact. All right. Outstanding. We have everything. And then for the simulations, we used Open Rocket, but we also have developed around um, simulator, which we tested with that rocket and with a lot of the rockets that we have launched. Um, in the association and the rest the results are pretty similar yeah so we have like a backup or uh, more information more calculation uh, on okay. that so there there will be anytime you bring technologies that the guy the older guys there at the spaceport haven't seen right the the re, the safety reviewers there's going to be a lot of questions sometimes students are doing really cool things and so just be, if you're using something that isn't commonly used, then be prepared to speak about that. Um, okay. 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 Yes. We always try to um, validate everything with the yes. software that is in the market or, or something okay. like that to make sure that everything is well explained. Gotcha. But I think you're using for for most of your recovery parts there. You're using what looks to be fairly standard COTS things. You you have yes. one SRED flight computer, but everything else it's connected to seems to be a COTS. What about yes. your actual shock cord? Can I see it? Yes, we have it there. There is a nylon one, like uh, nylon. We use Kevlar a lot here, but ah, Kevlar. Okay, so that, yeah, <laughs> okay. It's still a nylon one inch. Nylon one inch. All right. You you know all the weights, and you know, like they're going to ask you, you know, the the tensile strengths and and all of that. Um, so they're they're going to want to know what it's rated for versus what your rocket weighs, and then what are the margins of safety, right? Um. The nylon um, is easily burnt, but you're not using black powder, right? So, so there's those types of things that, um, you know, people's minds are going to immediately say, "Oh, you need Kevlar," 
but you don't need Kevlar because you're not using pyrotechnic charges to separate the rocket. And we have some Nomex blankets to protect everything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, okay. I don't think I have any more questions on those items. What else? We got, we got up. We got kit. Put it on the rail. We got up. We got, how are we separating it? And then we got down. Um, yes, and we have the the payload that is non injectable, so non injectable. Okay. Yes. Yes, to make things easier. Is it yeah. above or below the separation? It is at the tip. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. What is your uh, stability? Um, static stability of one point eight. The the point eight at least okay. here. 1.86 that is okay that's good that that's really good yeah sometimes the stability goes way up when you start putting stuff up in the nose you can get quote overstable um and and they don't like to see rockets too overstable do you know why yeah because if it it doesn't reduce at the end the angle of attack scenes it just starts to to correct too much the angle of attack. So yeah, well, the, it's called weather cocking. That's yeah. that's our word is weather cocking, right? So the rocket goes up and it turns and then it goes at a different angle. Now, there's a way to combat that, and I think you guys are probably going to have that in spades, right? When you have a really big motor with a high thrust to weight ratio, you you can overcome some of those uh, overstable conditions. Not all of it, right? It's still weather cock some, but if the rocket's moving really fast, the likelihood that it's going to turn a lot goes down. So, what's your exit speed off the rail? I have it here. This one? Yeah, 124 feet second. 124 feet per second. Yeah. Again, you need to make sure that you've accounted for the length of your rail buttons and we yeah, have yeah. stability. Yeah, we, we have. Um, Reduce the, the the total distance of the rail of the SCA cup by the the distance between the the rail buttons. Okay. So we have accounted it. And so you still have one hundred and twenty four feet per second. Yeah, yeah, because of the okay. high amount of thrust since okay. the beginning. So so that's that's again something that's important to be able to articulate to your okay. reviewer people, right? Is say like <clears throat> we say we have one hundred and twenty four feet per second. <laughs> when our first rail button departs the rail, right? Yeah. No. It wasn't in there. Okay. Can you guys show us the um, the way you're going to retain the motor in the rocket? Yes, of course. So we are using the same design that we use it in the other uh, supersonic rocket that we launch. Okay, um, we are attaching the motor from the, the bottom. So here you see the piece. I think you can see it. Sí, sí, que es algo. Ah, okay, so you have like a bracket that you're going to yes, screw no, in. Here. here the motor is attached. So in this part, we are using the the recommended like it's around. Okay. And then we have the the coupler that goes there that also is designed to withstand the the thrust, the maximum thrust, if there was a problem. You got bolt. Okay. Is there a bolt that goes all the way through that? About uh, here. Yes. Yes, it's a motor. The... No, but it's like a capsule or a Ah, no, there's nothing. It's okay. for the end of the motor. Because Brett, that would be a way to solve that strength problem. I think in there is that maybe if the bolt were all the way through and structural, but yeah, I'm not going to design or engineer for him. Yeah, okay. it, it increases uh, rigidity. <laughs> yeah. Would like to okay. Uh, all right. Like so. So basically, the that bottom 
uh, like tail cone slides off, you put the motor in, you put the tail cone back on, and then you mount it with like six screws or something like that. Yes, yes, the idea is to take off this piece. Yep. Slide the motor inside and then put the six screws. Okay. okay. And this piece is able to do yeah. hi, sorry. And this piece is able to withstand the the motor uh weight. Okay. All right. Because it's six looks okay. good to me. Yes, we designed it um to achieve like uh well to can assemble the motor inside with uh the fastest as possible because we know that once the motor is all assembled um it's like dangerous to stay around and stay a lot of time with the motor in your hands yes so, so let's move to that so um some of the housekeeping things that that i am reminded that i need to remind you about um you guys have airplane tickets already yes okay you have visas if you need visas? Yes. Okay. All right. You've got a place to stay. You're staying in a hotel or somewhere? I don't know. Uh, but, but yes. Yeah. We, we haven't booked it. Yeah, yet, we yet, haven't booked but it, but we, we know the place and we are doing it this week because we are right. waiting to know if one people is coming with us or not. I got you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So make sure, make sure that you get your accommodations booked we don't want you to show up and have to sleep under a bridge okay <laughs> yeah um, we don't want it those you don't want you don't want that <laughs> no. okay it, it's hot during the day and cold at night um, yeah. um and there's a lot of dangerous animals and yeah, there's, <laughs> like the there can be. And yeah, well the humans are probably the most dangerous animals anywhere but, uh, yes um, okay <laughs> but but we also want make sure that you read your agreements about yes. like if you if you do a a b and b a airbnb or a vbro or whatever you know just be cognizant of what you are and aren't allowed to do inside the house in the garage on the property okay um okay. please please follow those rules so we we say it who who's been to spaceport before anybody any anyone no. on your team been there no no first time um in fact we are the first spanish team to take part in in spaceport Oh, that's awesome. Congratulations. Thank, um, you. thank you. So the the first part of the event happens at a convention center. Yes. Okay? And Las Cruces. Oh, that's no cool. energetics are allowed in that. And that includes your CO2 cartridges. Okay. Okay. Energetics. No energetics. Yeah. Nothing, nothing that can come apart violently or nothing that can burn violently. Okay. is allowed inside that that facility okay okay so but if we not ship your motor rocket, yes but if we ship the rocket there with the raptors and and all of that but without black powder it's okay to have it stored there or we have to take it from the package you need to take it from the event they're not going to be happy with it being stored okay. there on site okay but we can ship it there um I will neither confirm nor deny on video. <laughs> I would say I would say have it have it. So the the thing is, be careful with shipping things because if they find that, you know, if it's on the airplane with you, that might be a problem. If you're shipping, no, yeah, I okay. I I think things like black powder have to be declared. No, uh, black powder. Brett is um, okay. bringing okay. black powder for us. We are only shipping. Like the CO2 canisters. All right. I, I don't know the rules. I'm not a lawyer. I don't know the rules on all of we that. We think so. it's not a problem because okay. as far as not in a small compartment, yeah. it's only gas release. So right. it's not, there's no risk of explosion or, or anything. Right. right. Well, if there is, uh, Alba, if there is a problem, I'll sell you 45 gram cartridges on my. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Perfect. So, your shop. So, yes. so if you end up deciding not to ship them, just tell me before okay. Sunday. Yes. That, okay. That you need forty-five gram cartridges. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, we just bought like twelve canisters, okay. so we hope to to be able to send 
send it there. So yeah. and and so you can't look. I do believe you can ship those, but what I'm saying is try and don't store those at the convention center. Okay. okay. Yeah, take those in your suitcase to your to your hotel. Yeah, to okay. wherever you're staying. Okay. And the other things we don't have anything because Imachi's bread is bringing them to us. Okay. So we don't have any other energetics. Perfect. Only the CO2. Only the CO2s. Well, and the motor, but you're not going to have the motor until you get to the event, yes. right? Okay. Yes, All yes. Right. So All right. So there's the no energetics in the convention center speech. Um, I covered your logistics of, you know, room, you know, being able to get there, making sure you have visas, making sure you have a place to stay, car, make sure you got a car, whatever y'all are going to rent, right? Um, and then the other, the other piece of housekeeping is um, it, it's really hot in the desert. It's really dry in the desert. You may not sweat. So you may not know that you're getting dehydrated. If you feel thirsty, you're already behind. Okay. okay. So, so you need somebody, <laughs> you need somebody on your team maybe, or set a timer for every 30 minutes and, and just constantly be drinking a little bit of water. Okay, or fluid, some fluid. <laughs> I can do that. Water, You're going to be the nag? Is that what I hear? You're going to nag everyone? Yes. Yes. All right. <laughs> so look, we, every year we tell this to people every year we, we have somebody, you know, suffer a heat event. We, we would like to not have that happen. It's a very preventable thing. Um, everybody gets there, they get excited, they get distracted, rockets start flying, they're working on their thing, right? Like it's real easy to forget to drink water or Gatorade or something. And so please keep each other accountable for drinking some water and and not don't what did somebody told me at least one liter per hour is what one liter per hour. One liter per hour. This is a crazy amount so, of water. That's a lot of water. Well, that's how you stay <laughs> hydrated. Like a swimming pool inside. <laughs> well, so that's that's how you know that you are hydrated. Okay. If okay. if you aren't visiting a porta potty every hour or two, you aren't drinking enough water. <laughs> okay. Okay. So okay, so please, please water. You're gonna hear that, you're gonna hear that at least 12 different times. But please <laughs> drink okay. more water. All right. Um, we want you to come and have a good time. We don't want you sick or hurt. Okay. Yeah. Um, that, that we don't want any, any, none, none of the bad parts, all the good parts. Okay. No, and we are only nine in the team. So we don't have, you don't have spare humans to <laughs> <laughs> don't have enough humans. <laughs> okay. No, no spare people. Yes. So keep them all up and running by keeping them <laughs> lubricated with water. <laughs> okay all right um so that, that that's the big one is and now there's there's two things that people usually get hurt at a rocket launch the two common injuries at rocket we've already covered the one in spades with water do you know what the other one is it's the most sunburn. common injury sunburn. sunburn sunburn no but that's a good one i do do <laughs> track of that um no, there's a very common injury. So where are your electronics in your rocket? Where are, where, where are they located? Are they in the nose cone? Are they in the, middle. in the middle? Can you reach them from the ground? Yes. Okay. So you don't well, have that. Well, the idea. Uh, because using a leather and all that stuff. Yes, yes. we try to avoid using a leather. Perfect. We have a bridge, which is a uh, tall... You know, <laughs> to, to read. Yeah, we try, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. we try to design everything to, to reach electronics on the without uh, outstanding. Anything. Outstanding. That's great. We like we like to see and hear that. That's perfect. But if you if you do need to use a ladder, make sure that you have a ladder that's tall enough for what you need, and then you have a at least a person holding the ladder while the, per the other person, because falling off the ladder is a pretty common injury and in that they turn into bad injuries, broken legs and, you know, yeah. bad things. So, um, yes. Okay. We'll take you into account. Yeah. Well, awesome. Um, okay. So Brett, the flyer record, any more concerns, questions from you? 
I have a question for you, Chris. I, I I have been to Spaceport, but I have not been to this event. Okay. The um the guys have uh, a CTI N5800 motor. It requires uh, grain gluing. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've done a lot of this, but typically I've glued the grains in my own shop. Mm -hmm. uh, their motor is going to arrive at um, Spaceport somewhere. So what is your advice on a good place that's not dusty and and um, appropriate for gluing? Uh, you know, it's a really big motor. Um, yeah. And, and we need to be really careful about this. Um, right. So normally I would do this in an enclosed place where it's not too dry because I'm using, uh, you know, Gorilla Glue and it, it needs a little moisture to foam yep. up. Yep. Um, you know, and I'm sure the grains are not going to fit and the case will be too big. So we got to sand it a lot and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So what's your advice on that? So, so typically the teams I have worked with have a garage somewhere, or they find a team that has rented a house where you can go and borrow the garage. And again, you got to check with your rules and make sure a, you're allowed to use the garage and that they don't explicitly say, you know, no pyrotechnics or something in there. But um, that's that's the way I've seen it done. And then I've seen everyone do it not the great ways, whether it's out there in the dirt or in hotel rooms, which they shouldn't be doing and and that kind of thing. So if if you're not renting a house and it, Find some, find a team that is, that will allow you. There's plenty of people that live in and around the area um, that are volunteers. There's plenty of uh, New Mexico State University people that, you know, may have a garage that they'd let you borrow for long enough to assemble your grains, um, that type of thing. So, And maybe the, the actual New Mexico University, maybe they offer spaces because I know they... They Maybe. offer like dorms. They offer dorms, but I don't think they want rocket motors in the dorms. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, again, I'm not a lawyer or whatever, so feel free to check me on that. But um, I understand. Okay. So, so Brett, I don't have a great answer for you there. Um, you know, I I personally use silicone, even though that other things tell me to use the Gorilla Glue. The silicone doesn't expand, um, and it doesn't cause swelling on the grains and things like that. Um, so that's just me personally when I fly big motors. What kind of silicone do you use? Um, I use whatever I can find, whatever RTV I can so find. Silicone at like Home RTV. Depot. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whatever I can find at Home Depot because it, it doesn't, you know, and it will harden whatever firm up without the need of lots of humidity and that type of thing. Right. So it yeah. mm -hmm. sidesteps some of those challenges. Um, yeah, I've used a great I, I have um, RTV on some Loki motors, so I, yeah. I'm familiar with it. I just okay. have not used it on CTI motors. I got you. Yeah. Well, I, you know, again, that's that's sort of one of those. Does CTI say you can't use it, or it has just has to be bonded? Like, um, manufacturer instructions are usually pretty good, uh, but. I feel your pain on having to then sand after the fact because the thing's something swelled up and then it doesn't fit in the tube. And yeah. Okay. Well, we'll sort that out. Um, okay. Just be very careful if you do use the silicone, you know, the RTV method. Um, it is a really great inhibitor and you don't want it in between your grains. I, I get my hair. So, do you guys have checklists for your flight or do you plan to? Um, at least, uh, yes, yes, we work on some of them, but these days we will um do like a um, yes, like es que no sé cómo es de un simulacra. Mm. A mock, a mock. Yeah, yeah, a mock up of the launch operations to make sure that we have everything. But the main checks are um to receive data from the electronics because we have a ground station, so make sure that we are receiving the data and everything is is going well and then the weather of course to make sure that we don't have uh, more speed um wind speed that they allowed and these are the main checks that we have of points 
that are critical before launching. Okay. Last question. When do you guys arrive physically in the United States? We arrive the fifteenth. Mm -hmm. At seven o'clock. Uh is the Saturday. Saturday fifteenth. Okay. To okay. have We're... like this thing to work on the details. Where where do you land? Where where is your plane land? El Paso. El Paso. Okay. Yes. So it's, yes. it's a shorter drive there, but El Paso is not the greatest city. So just be. I just realized that it's next to Ciudad de Juarez and all of that. <laughs> yeah, and it's just unfortunately there's been some, you know, problems there. So. The, okay. Don't don't. Uh, I will. I would recommend that you don't. If you're not, especially if you're not familiar with El Paso, I would recommend that you, you know, get your car and depart and get to Las Cruces before you stop for anything or, you know, like that kind of thing. I mean, try, try to keep that to a minimum just so that you can avoid. <laughs> any... <laughs> yeah, okay. The, the, don't, don't be a tourist in El Paso. It's not yeah. the best. No, so we, we were on plan. Okay. To 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 the, that. Yeah. We will go to Las Cruces and I stay there. <laughs> okay, Brett. <laughs> anything else? Um. Hey, yes. Oh well, Brett, go on. I, I was just gonna say. So Alba and team, I ha I have a crazy idea. <laughs> we should discuss. You know, tomorrow after you guys had a chance to sleep, it's late for you. Um. If you could come, if if one or two of you could come a day earlier and and meet me in santa fe i could use one of my n5800 motors and we could build it and assemble it in my shop you know and make sure it's perfect and then i could drive it down there and then you know you could give me the one you bought um okay so so that's that's an idea um so, so to, to build that motor, I, I need at least one person. <laughs> Extra but hands. Maybe two. But yeah, yeah it, I need at least one pair of hands. Uh, we can't we can't do that with just one person. You need two, uh, ideally three. But anyway. How long by car is El Paso of uh, Santa Fe? It's, it's, it's a pretty long drive. Okay. You can go on Google, but... Um, it's probably like I think it's six hours something. Ooh, yeah, okay. is is Santa Fe closer to Albuquerque then? Yes. Yeah. If if you flew to Albuquerque, then then uh, the drive would fly, be nice. You you yeah, or you could drive to you could fly to El Paso then. Y'all y'all can discuss those logistics and yeah. And... So so anyway, I'm just throwing that idea out. Um, think about that, and we'll, we'll talk tomorrow. Yes, we have problem because there's um a few flights from uh, Spain to um yeah. El Paso. Maybe I can come because I will come from Houston. Yeah. So maybe okay. I have the option, but it's a bit difficult for us. Okay. That that's mm -hmm. the only comment I have. So, yeah, I, right. I I it's a good idea. But okay. we have the flights and and there's like three different flights to arrive to El Paso. Yeah, I can only imagine. The logistics is a bit crazy. It's like a 17th hour trip. Yeah. From around the United oh States, gosh. mainly. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> All right. Do you guys have any questions? Any other questions for me? Yes. I was worried about the, the clothes because I have seen there's a guide um, about clothes. But I was Close. wondering the Europa. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're worried about the Europa. Okay. The Europa. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, because I have seen uh, photos of other years and the teams use like long sleeve um clothes. Yes. Okay, yes. so I, we recommend it for the, I, the it team. is it is a really great way to avoid getting sunburned, except the back of your hands and your face, right? So hats and so there's this is not an advertisement or an endorsement by any stretch of the imagination but under armor makes those you know sweat wicking things right and you can get 
-hmm. I think they call them compression. Mm -hmm. um, so you just go look on Amazon for Under Armour compression shirts and they fit tight so that your other shirts fit easily. Com uh, what is it? Compression, right? For the shirts. Compression. For the shirts, yes. Okay, so have like a shirts um, above, no, above, no. So yes. Or below or shirts. Yes. Okay. Okay, yes, I have seen that we are recommended to use like a long sleeve shirts and... Yep. I would say that's a great recommendation. It's not required, but but is a great recommendation. No, we will do it because yeah. we have seen that then the snakes doesn't bite you. <laughs> well, the, the, that's the long, you want long <laughs> pants, right? It's like some sort of cargo pant or jeans or something. Cargo pants tend to be a little more flexible if you're going to be out there hiking. It's not necessarily comfortable to hike in jeans, but there's cactus, there's other animals I right worried about the um, the temperatures there during the day the temperatures do get hot if we have a lot of um, clothes maybe so yeah. again the under armor the that particular shirt is is a sweat wicking it breathes fairly well so it, it is it is a relatively comfortable item it's not like you're wearing a jacket okay 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 thank you and then the other question was about um, the competition logistics, because we know that the first two days we are in the convention center. Yes. So the rocket can stay there. The, the rocket time. without the energetics can yes. stay there. Yes. And you will have a, it's like a science everything. fair. You have a table, you have an assigned table, and you can set all of your stuff up on the table and you can put the rocket there. You, if you have a stand to hold the rocket, you know, vertically, you can use that. Um, okay. next to your table okay it's it's meant to be a display table judges will come around and want to see the rocket and talk to you about payloads and all that kind of stuff right so you're going to need to be able to kind of you know like i said it's a science fair kind of thing you know, a display booth if you will yes um, it is but there's security or something if we yes. left rocket yes. there okay yes. because when there there are Long plenty of, so. <laughs> yes there there is security um plenty of security um so so you've not been there so getting so that's in las cruces right yes. that's in the city the spaceport is an hour it's away hour. it's yes. an hour it's at least an hour drive okay and because of where las cruces is located in the united states there is a um a they call it migra. There's an immigration checkpoint that you will have to go through. Yes, I have seen that. Yes. So, so you guys probably want to make sure you've got your your passports with you. Okay. Okay. We write these. Uh, we write these in the travel or how to get to a spaceport or something. Yeah, like they that. they will give you a pretty good. Yes. You know, then maybe coming from truth or consequences were more more easier because there was not the the immigration checkpoint correct yes <laughs> yeah well you have to go through it like well you'd have to land in albuquerque and then drive to truth or consequences and then you would avoid ever having to go through any of the okay. Im immigration checkpoints okay. if you fly to el paso and then you go to las cruces there's at least one immigration checkpoint that so have the passport um always with us yes okay well uh, can't you get a passport card now? A passport card? I don't think so. No, no. Uh, maybe that's just a United uh -huh. States thing. I know we have the... like the passport the book. Yeah, yes, you got a book. book. Yes, but anyways, it's more secure to bring it always with you than living in the hotel because it. Yeah. If something happens. Don't lose it. Don't lose it out in the desert when you're hunting for your rocket. Oh, no, no, we don't want. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to live forever in, in yeah. space in the United States. All right. In the middle, no, in the middle of the desert. <laughs> in other places, it's okay, but there, got, here got in you. Spain, there's no like yeah. dangerous animals or this weather. So, right. it's more okay. easy to survive. 
than in the middle of the desert. <laughs> what other questions? What what other questions do you have? Um, no, I think I don't have any other questions. Do you have any other questions? Okay, can you explain us a little bit the the checks that we will have to pass before launching the rocket? Because I know there's a pull test, no, for the electronics, like a pull test, like they, oh, yeah, for the cables. Yeah. Of the electronics. And oh, then I, think... I, I think what they're going to do is they're just going to pull on things. To, so when you take your rocket to be safety inspected, so you're going to you're going to show up to Las Cruces for the event. You're going to check in. There's a check in process. You need anybody who's going to go out on the rocket range to either put the rocket on the pad. And I think they're limiting you to like five people for that. Yes. Okay. Yes. We, so without those people... counting the player of record, I think. All right. So so those people will have to have their triple E membership cards to show, right? Or the electronic version of that. Yes. Okay. Yes, okay. we have it. Okay. And then anybody. Yes, we're here. Okay. It, well, anybody who's going to go recover the rocket after it has flown. We'll also need to have Tripoli car. Okay. Yes. Um, so they'll do that as your check-in. They're going to give you a badge. They're going to check your Tripoli things. They're going to check all that stuff. They're going to check you in to the event, give you t-shirts and packets of all of the things, assign you a table to go put your rocket on, right? To do, do the display. And there should be a schedule of the things like when the judges are coming and when the safety review booth is open. And, and so then you're going to, Go and get your stuff set up. You're going to get your rocket ready. You're going to get in the queue for the safety review. And then they will bring you in and they're going to have you, you know, basically the rocket semi-assembled when you when you show up and they're going to have you pull it all apart. And the exact same thing that we just did, except they're going to be touching it and they're yeah. going to be looking at it and holding it. And, pull, <laughs> and then they may pull on things, right? And they may, um, so that that's, they're, they're going to- <laughs> They're gonna go thoroughly through your rocket. Um, okay, and how much it um lasts, like the the safety review? How how long is it? Yes, how long is it? Get, get Approximately. Um, probably an hour. An hour. Okay. Yeah, kind of like this, right? Like this is a very similar process to this. They're gonna tell you a whole bunch of things, right? The their opinions, and the, you know, I've given you suggestions and whatever about you know okay. my flights and um it's going to be very similar there will be at least two people there to you know to help each other possibly three um and not and probably not me um and so they'll they'll go through your stuff again final check just to make sure that it's ready and then then they will give you Either they'll give you some defects that you need to go fix. Hey, this is, you know, like one of the things I'm thinking I didn't ask you about is your your cords. Like they may not want them tied. They may want them sewn or they may want you to use something different. Sewn loops versus tied loops. Like so that type of stuff. Again, pay close attention to that detail. Okay. Okay, so if if you have defects, they're going to give you a sheet that has the list of defects, and you're and going to go fix those. Card. I'm sorry. And if not, if everything is okay, they give you the green card. Yeah, the, the green card, the flight yeah, card. The green. Oh, sorry. Yes, the yes. green card is like a visa. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I appreciated that though. That was fun. Yeah, that would be amazing. <laughs> yes, yes. If you come fly a rocket successfully, you you get a green card. <laughs> um so yes they will give you a flight card okay and then okay. the earliest opportunity that you will have to fly a rocket is wednesday afternoon okay so if uh, in an ideal world you show up and on monday you get your safety review complete tuesday then you can kind of relax and work on the judges the judges will come around they'll same kind of thing there's like they're usually just wandering and looking and, and whatever, there's not as much of a schedule or, you know, proactive for the judging, but you can try to figure out who your judges are and say, hey, we're here, come judge us. Um, the judging mostly happens there and in the event center. There's an opening ceremony. There's a, there's a safety um, a 
like mandatory you the team lead and like one other person need to show up to the flight safety brief it's a, just a meeting it's usually short 15 20 minutes they go over process and procedures for the pads okay um and and the so the pads don't happen until wednesday afternoon it's the earliest opportunity um if for whatever reason you've got that remedial flight safety thing that you've got to fix and you can't get it fixed before wednesday then they will do the the final part of that safety check they will do out at spaceport at the launch site okay um the when you have your flight card though you don't have any energetics there okay so got let's pretend we're best case scenario you got your flight card the winds aren't high you're going to fly it wednesday afternoon you show up with your rocket the rocket's checked but when you show up to to fly it they're going to want to see the motor too so there's a final check i've got a flight card and the motor and everything the rocket's ready to fly and they're going to now you've got energetics when you're out there at the the launch site and and they will check those also and then they'll put you in a queue to go get a pad okay and then that pad you'll drive out to the pads um you will be assigned a place to put your rocket there are people out there pad managers i did that job one year that will help you make sure that you can get it put on the rail they they like to kind of do it together so they'll say okay everybody put your rocket on the rail but don't tip it up yet right and then they'll say okay everybody's got the rocket on the rail and secured and all that now everybody tip the rocket up and everybody okay does all that and then they say arm the electronics okay and so then everybody goes and arms their electronics right and then they'll finally say okay everybody put your igniters in um and so everybody does the, does the igniters and connects the leads and text test continuity and all that kind of stuff and then everybody evacuates the area to go get ready to fly um, okay. okay okay thank you yes there's there there's a couple no. other little pieces in there like when that whole process of checking in to to fly your rocket um there is a recovery training that you may have to take a video you got to watch and then you got to check in with the recovery people they will give you a radio and you have to have that radio it's a safety thing right so if you get lost out there you can contact somebody okay? in the middle of the desert in the middle of the desert yeah they want to make sure that they've got they the radio is a two-way radio and they know where you are. So it's got okay. like a GPS in it so they can find you. Um, <laughs> yes. All right. Well, we your recovery move. team, your recovery <laughs> team needs to stay together. Yes. Okay. Okay. At least visual, visual side of each other. Not all together. Okay. okay. They'll go over all this stuff again with you. So you don't have to remember it now. Um, but you you ask, so does that answer your question? Any other questions about yes. that? Yes, thank you. I don't think so. Okay. Do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. Okay, no. All right. Thank you very much. Yes, well, we're, we're, look, every, we, like I said, this event is really cool. I love working with college people. They show up with lots of energy. We want you to fly your rocket. We want you to be successful. We want you to be safe. We want everyone to be safe. We don't want anyone hurt. We don't want anyone heat heat exhausted. All right. So come have a good time and enjoy visiting New Mexico and good luck. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. All right. Thank awesome. Take care, guys. Thanks, Take guys. Care. Nice Bye. to meet you. Chris. Nice to meet you. <laughs>